Good afternoon. It's September 19. This is Steve Carver. I'm in Dunn, North Carolina at my home office studio, and we're going to be uh, doing all kinds of things that we can talk about tonight to help people plan their new business. I want to tell you right up front, I'm not a lawyer or an accountant. Just a fellow that's been in business a while and loves to give free advice, and the best advice I can give you is always get a good second or even third opinion before you make a serious decision in your business or financial security. And indeed, one of the best places, or maybe the very best place to get that uh, good, friendly advice and confidential advice is at your small business center uh, nearest you, and especially the one in Bladen County and Bladen Community College. Brad Johnson's on the line with us. Brad, thank you for joining us tonight. We certainly look forward to working with you, and uh, I know the attendees appreciate you being here with us as well. Uh, just as you were just saying, you're certainly welcome to give Brad a call, set up an appointment. His number is here, 910-879-5572. Just like having another employee working for you, no charge, free advice, good resources. If you're not taking advantage of it, then uh, it's, it's your era, so I certainly encourage you to do it. Brad, do you want to give us just another short hello? Um, yeah, yeah, as, as, as told, told, wait a minute, wait a minute, you need, you need, you need. all right, so no feedback now? Yeah, okay, so yeah, as I was telling Steve, and everyone's already heard this, you know, I really do enjoy helping people, uh, the Small Business Center is such a gift in my opinion, and it's a resource that you're taxed, so no, it's not a gift because you're paying taxes, so you're paying for it. So you might as well use it. Uh, I've started three businesses. I've worked for large corporations as well. Uh, I've got an MBA, not that that matters, except for the fact that I do understand what things can help and what things might hinder a business, uh, at least, you know, from my experience. And if I'm not an expert on something, which I'm not on, you know, many things, I, we have other people who are, of course, no charge as well who will help you out. So look forward to hearing from y'all, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself now. All right, Brad. Thank you so much, and I uh, appreciate your genuine efforts. All right, so good to have you back. I'm enjoying going steady with you during this series, and we got a little bit more to go, so let's just make these plans for our Tuesday nights from 6 to 8, and uh, we'll certainly be learning a lot. I'm going to guarantee you that if you, if you stay with us through the whole series, you will not regret it because you will have so many new ideas and tools to work with. Uh, so we've got, uh, after t tonight, we've got uh, a few more uh, sessions, and the uh, next week we'll be talking about marketing and the following week about uh, how to find customers. So let's, let's stay on board with it and see if we can make it happen. Uh, after we do that, you'll have an option, if you'd like to join us for five more Wednesday nights to dive deeper into a lot of these subjects to uh, to help you better understand whatever we haven't covered deep enough. Study guys went out to you, uh, and we appreciate Brad sending them out. Uh, you've got uh, a bunch of them. Uh, I want to mention a couple. Of course, number one, uh, you got your uh, talking points. That's your main study guide. That you, if you can print them out, and uh, so you can make notes during the during the session. That's why I, I really like to try to send them out early. Of course, I know some of you maybe don't have a printer, but still you got them uh, where you can make notes and then add them later if you want to. So you got the drill skills that we're going over each week, the, uh, making your mission, vision, and promise statements. Tonight we're going to look at a sample business plan or model. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to be reading about doing business as and pricing. Uh, and we're very lucky tonight in that one of our uh, uh, attendees sent me a video about uh, how to form an LLC or if you're thinking about doing it in North Carolina. This is a commercial video, but it's still uh, very, very good and worthwhile to watch it through. It's fairly short, but it'll give you a good understanding about LLCs. These videos can tell us more in five minutes sometimes than I can tell you in two hours, so it's a good thing to do. Also, I've got a little handout there that's talking about business planning when you're doing a side hustle or a second income. Uh, oftentimes in the webinars and seminars, we just kind of discount that as, as not a, 
so important and look at every business plan as if it's a standalone business. And it, it's been dawning on me that that's, in most cases, is not the case. So I've got some more information for those of us that are starting a side hustle, side income business, because that business plan will be will be different in a, in a lot of different ways. <clears throat> as Brad was saying, and I know, and uh, several of y'all already know, because I can see you uh, already had careers and now maybe doing extra stuff. Uh, a small business is not a, an easy job. It's very challenging, very trying, can be uh, very, very stressful, can be very rewarding, of course. So I know that, and I want to say to you how proud I am for you uh, being determined to see it through because that's what it's going to take. <clears throat> My job is to stand behind you, support you, motivate you, do the very best that I can to be assertive in a positive way. So up front, I'm going to say to you, I apologize for telling you all these things you need to be doing when you're looking back at me saying, hey, I've already got a full schedule. How do you expect me to do that, Steve? Well, that's the magic of entrepreneurship. We have to find a way to change our priorities to put things in a place that we can get them done. <clears throat> because if we don't do things different tomorrow, than we do today, we can't expect things to change. So uh, I'll keep motivating. Y'all keep forgiving me, and we'll move along. Now, if you're just uh, attending this series to take what comes in and enjoy it, that's fine. But if you're in it to get the most out of it, uh, you will need to be doing your homework and your challenges that I'm giving to you to really see things move forward. And in just a few minutes here, you'll see that a lot of you are doing that and you'll start seeing the benefits of it once you do. So create your MVP statements. Uh, list those mark, uh, uh, five marketable uh, profit centers, and you'll see how that plays so important in your business plan tonight. Create your Facebook pages and your business page, because that's going to be the least expensive way <clears throat> for you to get moving in your business uh, and learning as well in all the things we're talking about. <clears throat> to show me that you are in there and to show yourself you can do it. I want to challenge each of you to find my to find my pages at Facebook simply so I can connect and watch what you're doing and uh, check your homework out that way. Uh, here's my address and at my personal page, Anthony Stephen Carver. Uh, my uh, main business page is 360 Business right there. And my uh, corporate uh, page is Carver Equipment. So find those, if you will, on, on Facebook. Or like, like them, send me a message, just let me know you're there. That'll help me find you as well. And then we'll start moving forward with actually doing work. Same thing applies at YouTube. Those of you that do the YouTubes and create your own channel are going to be creating a fantastic brand new website to help people find you and get started. So. Uh, find my find my YouTube channel. Here's the uh, uh, the link to it, uh, and it is listed as Anthony Stephen Carter. Uh, when you get there, you'll be able to see all the presentations that I record. You'll get to see videos of uh, how we put videos together for Carver Equipment and for many of the clients that have been working with us along the way. Uh, when I when I when we do the uh, the improvements, I usually post them in my YouTube channel as well. So please try to find that. That way uh, you can start moving as well. So hey, Darcy, here's Darcy and uh, Brad, here she is. Uh, thank you so much for what you're doing. I've been checking you out, of course, on Facebook, and I appreciate the information that you've been sending. I certainly got a lot of uh, talent and, and uh, skills that I'm looking forward to seeing you put to work <clears throat> into a viable uh, business to go forward. I love the uh, images that you're sharing as the florist. Indeed, it makes you feel good. And uh, we know need to turn this into a money-making proposition or a service provider uh, uh, as a nonprofit, whichever way you decide to go. I'm hoping you can grow a nice business and, uh, and uh, get paid well for your services. But thank you for what you're doing and for the information that you shared so far. I'll be sharing it as well. Pamela over in Rose Hill uh, is joining us as, as well, and she's got her PMP farms trained up, doing a good job. And Valerie is working hard to move her uh, transportation business in Wilmington. She's joining us on Wednesday and Thursday nights. Uh, she's uh, 
that's been in business now for about three years and uh, trying to figure out how to make it grow and make more money. If you're in the transportation business, you've got a lot of expenses and it's real easy to get up and work real hard one day and lose more money than you make. So business planning is so important. Hey, Janae, there you are. I found your picture. Putting you up here. Let folks know that uh, uh, how, how you're uh, looking and ready to go to work. Thank you for the comments that you've been making. I look forward to seeing your marketable profit centers and your videos coming forward. And we'll certainly try to help you move forward. So thank you very much for your participation. Levita's over in Beulahville. She hasn't sent us uh, any details about her business, but I'm looking forward to learning more about what you're doing. Jeffrey Smith is at White Lake. He's the uh, new owner of the Gilligan's Island uh, Resort and several other businesses. I'm hoping that Jeff and his wife Holly will uh, be very supportive of the Small Business Center and certainly want to say thanks for him for joining us last week. Tisha is putting together a um, a, a stitching business where she's uh, uh, making clothes to order and repairing old clothes, a very needed uh, occupation in Eastern North Carolina. And she's been very helpful with, uh, with the uh, seminars along the way. Casey's wide open with her work. She, I think, resides in Beulahville, but mainly does most of her business in, uh, in, in uh, Wilmington. Indeed, she has done a fantastic job this week getting started with her uh, Google uh, uh, My Business Online, already getting reviews. She told me in an email that uh, she's hoping this is going to really move her business forward. Believe me, if you jump into this, it can help you so much to move your business forward. If you do not have a My Business on Google account, you're missing a free lot of business that can come your way. So let's plan to do that. And that's one of your uh, homework assignments. Uh, welcome to uh, Mike Gibson and Jeff, glad to have, to have you, Jeff Smith, glad to have you on board. We just mentioned uh, that you were with us and look forward to working with you and getting a lot of information from you. The Featherby Apricary is an interesting, interesting website that is coming up. One of our our class is doing that, and uh, that's Casey is the name of her business. And so this is a, indeed an interesting subject that I'm looking more to learning about. This is folks that, that take the herbs and things that are growing in their garden and around and actually offer it to folks to uh, uh, kind of as a drug to help them with whatever their problems are. So we're going to learn a whole lot more about this as we go forward. Annette, welcome. Glad to have you from Chick Van, and she is trying to decide what business she's going to be going into. Charlotte's been with us on uh, Thursday nights and look forward to some more work from her. She's a singer, uh, writer, uh, uh, maker of music and poems, while at the same time she's a full-time nurse for 30-plus uh, years. And here's Cheryl. I found you on Facebook, Cheryl. Welcome. Glad to have you back with us and very interested in hearing more about your business and how you're making it work. There's no doubt about that you're into arts and colors and graphic designs and I just appreciate all the lovely images that you're posting. Now let's see if we can figure out how to make money with that. Sabreem, Dr. Sabreem is absolutely wide open. Uh, she's already a minister, uh, doing ministerial work and now she wants to try to help people with education. She's done a great job with her Facebook presentations. We're going to learn a lot from her. Uh, she's very strong on her YouTube channel. She will show us all how to do it. And I'm showing you these. For These are the people that are joining us on Tuesday and Wednesday night uh, and Thursday nights as well. So uh, as soon as we get a, a good handful of you that are contributing, I'll send out emails so you can just shop around and see what everyone's doing. But Dr. Sabreem is very, very talented with her videos. Her new business will be called Unchained Edubilities, where she's going to help folks out with their education needs. Uh, and uh, very, very interested in, in uh, seeing how many folks she can get on board. Very appreciative of her. She's jumped right in and did her mission and vision statements. I'll be sharing those to you individually. But so very important that you do this because it really sets the stage for helping you uh, set a course for your business with the outlines and the goals going forward. 
I appreciated that she already came forward with her core values. You can do that as well. Uh, keep it very simple, but it just helps give you a good, solid foundation to get your other thoughts in line and to move forward. Most appreciative is Dr. Sabrina went ahead and sent me her marketable profit centers, which we talked about in the uh, business planning. We'll take that apart, but she's in there. We cannot put together a good business plan for you, or you can't put together a good business plan for yourself until you've got a real good idea of how to estimate the income that's coming your way. Otherwise, what we have instead of a business plan, we have a wish list. We want to be more and more dedicated than just having a wish list because if you can come up with your profit centers, we can uh, estimate on the money it will bring to you and also what it will be costing you, and that will help us come up with what's left in the business plan as we'll talk about. So lots of folks are doing lots of things. I'm looking forward to getting more information from each one of you so we can help promote your business, help uh, uh, help you make better videos, uh, get them out in the world, show you how to get them uh, in front of your customers and actually start making money. Your job is to find the endurance to stay in the game. So congratulations for being back with us tonight and we'll keep it forward. And mate, we're glad to have you on board. Uh, I hope you'll stay with us for several for the several weeks as well. What I want from you is your website links, your Facebook links, personal photos, product photos. I want to see you active on Facebook and Google and on YouTube, and you will be making the right priorities by doing that to go forward. <clears throat> Talking about our 40 drill skills tonight on part two. Uh, last week we talked about several, uh, eight, talked about eight of them actually. We'll go over them uh, every week, new ones, and of course you'll have your hand out to look at. But of the eight we talked about last week, I want to pay special attention to, to a couple. Number one is the words, by the way. That is the, by the way, by the way, we've got this and we've got that. These three words lead you to upsells and cross-sells and what I call stacking profits. We want your uh, marketable profit centers to be linked in such a way that your customer, after they buy one thing, will be encouraged to buy several more things from you. It's fairly easy if indeed you take the time to do your forecasting and your merchandising and your pricing and learn how to sell. So by the way, it's always going to come up as a very important well, thing. Remember last week we talked about how to catch fish? Do you remember the three rules? The three rules, number one, two, and three, all the same is keep fresh bait in the water. Keep fresh bait in the water. So what's that got to do with customers? You catch customers by keeping fresh promotions in front of them. We have to remind them, stay in front of them, that we're here doing business. We would love to have their business, appreciate them, and offer them good value. So part of what we're going to do as entrepreneurs to keep our business alive and rolling is to always think about the fresh promotions we're putting out. Now, let's move into some new skills, eight more new skills now. Number nine, what is the best way to find customers? What is the best way to find customers? Remember this answer. Help them find you. Help them find you. If you're bringing the customers to you, instead of having to reach out and grab them, you're going to get a lot more customers coming in and for a lot less energy and investment on your part. So next week, we're going to be talking about marketing and the following week, how to find, find those customers. We don't hit this real hard, but that's going to be a key factor that you always need to think about. What's the best way I can help customers find me? Number 10, remember that your business cannot be all things to all people. You can't serve every customer, every type of customer. But indeed, your business must be everything to some people. And when you work hard to satisfy those uh, one customer at a time, you become everything for them, and they will become your RFC. RFC, raving fan customer. And that's a, that, that is a, a gem, a plum that we want to have. We can't be all things for all people. Don't even try to be. 
but try to be everything to some people, and indeed they will become your Raven fan customers, and Raven fan customers that keep you in business. Suggestion here, but real strong, don't pay your long-term debts off with short-term cash flow. Hopefully, as you get your businesses up and running, you don't have some good sales, and you don't create some cash, and you might even create more cash than you're spending one month at a time or have a little surplus. What I see happen oftentimes is those new entrepreneurs will take that a little bit of surplus they got and start applying it on long-term debt because they have a burning desire to get out of debt. Well, I know and appreciate that. I have lived with a large debt for a lot of years. You don't be in the farm equipment business and have 200 rental forklifts and tractors and things without being in a lot of debt. So Steve has been there, but here's the key. You use that debt to make money, and you pay it off as you had planned to, and that will build you surpluses as you go along. So we got to be real careful not to pay off our long-term debt with short-term uh, uh, money. You know why? Because you'll go out of cash flow and you'll be broke. It's better to build a reserve than it is to pay off long-term debt. You pay it off as it needed and keep your credit standing good. What's the difference in two words here? The word marketing and the mar word advertising. And man, we will use them all over the place Flip, flipping them back and forth in different sentences as if they mean the same thing. Well, you know, kind of, sort of, it does, but for our purposes in this uh, course, I want you to think in terms, when we talk marketing, we're talking the long-term picture. Every day, every month, every year, having your business name out there so customers will know who you are, where you are, and that you're here to stay. That's our marketing budget. And our marketing budget will always be larger than our advertising budget because advertising is just a piece of the marketing pie. Advertising, on the other hand, I want us to think is when we're targeting, when we're doing something special, when we're just opening up, when we're bringing in new uh, uh, profit centers and we want extra attention to go to them. We don't create our marketing uh, budget for the long-term good and our advertising about targeted marketing. Uh, next week when we talk about how to target customers, advertising will be the main uh, thing we talk about. Who is your biggest, toughest, meanest, and strongest competitor? It's not the guy down the street or the person in the same business you are. No. I am here to tell you, in eastern North Carolina, there's enough business out here for everyone. And our main, main most reason we don't get there is because of our own distractions. What we are not doing is what's keeping us back. So we must learn to fight those distractions. And how do we do that? We do it by setting priorities and staying with it, setting goals and, and standards making those high priorities, then the little things that have to get done is to say to ourselves, I don't move forward on it. No matter how busy my day is, I don't make a, some time to make this small business work. And then you can start moving forward. I want you to be able to define from memory fair market value. Fair market value. Of all the values and all the prices, and we could change that and say fair market price, but of all the values and all the pricing that are out there, and there are so many, I'll show you a page at some point with some 50 different ways to classify a price, there is only one that's a legal standard. There's only one that is a, is what you hear in court. There's only one that is defined by the, by the U.S. codes and that is fair market value. We want to know that as entrepreneurs because our goal is to purchase everything. If we're selling, we need to buy things below fair market value so we can sell things above fair market value. And if we're doing that in a discipline type way, we know that we have good room to make profitability and also good room to negotiate. 
But if we are out here buying things and we didn't do our homework and we start paying above fair market value for something that we want to resell, we're going to be in trouble. There's not going to be any margins left, and we will probably end up losing money if we don't understand how fair market value works in the game that you're playing. The game that your entrepreneurship is about. I call it a game sometimes. So what is the definition by law? It's the price in terms of money that a property will sell for or bring on the open market when the buyer and the seller are both willing and under no pressure and the buyer and the seller know their game. They understand this item and this market. And when those two individuals can agree on the price of a value of something, we can call that a fair market value. Now, what is the occupation in today's world of people who do nothing but, on average, establish fair market values? What's the name of that job? Appraisers. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You get 100 degrees on that one. Absolutely. Appraisers, that's exactly what they do. Whether it's real estate or or art uh, or, or, or whatever, boats, cars, and on and on and on. And that is a pretty good vocation to go for. It, it, it needs to be usually a side hustle, and that would be becoming a certified appraiser, a certified appraiser. Uh, I'm a certified appraiser. I got, did a course online, paid a little bit of money, uh, established a little bit of history, uh, passed a course, and I got my certified appraiser certificate. You don't have to do it but one time. And in a lot of your jobs, that is a good title to have. Uh, it's a good, it's a good uh, uh, quality to know and know how it works. So if you have interest in becoming a certified appraiser, drop me a note, write it in chat, and I'll send you a, a study guide about that and help you along with it. But now, part of your quiz to graduate from this course is going to be, tell me about fair market value and what it means. Number 16, the L and the H. The L and the H in advertising. The L and the H in marketing. This stands for the look and the hook. And I see it abused so much because 99%, in my opinion, 99% of all money we see spent on marketing and advertising is absolutely just wasted. It's junk. It's just junk. People get online and on TV just so they can see their face and say things and just lose every concept they're trying to sell something. The look and the hook will change that. I know how much money you, you can waste doing it because I have uh, spent over $6 million uh, uh, in Eastern North Carolina advertising for my business over the years. And I'll tell you right now that I know that I wasted at least 75% of it, probably more, but at least 75%. Now, I'd like to have that $4.5 million back in my pocket, but it ain't going to happen. So I'll just call that an investment in learning because when you learn about the look and the hook and the 27 times plan, then you will be able to stop wasting money with your marketing and advertising because we're going to add the look and the hook. The look is making it worth looking at, not trash, something that will hold somebody's attention. The hook is a call to action a statement, a picture, a video, a message that we put into every advertising to encourage people to come and do business now. Call to action. Do business now. The hook. I want every one of you to become a great hooker as related to LNH advertising because it will help you save so much money and make the ads that you do buy be so much more effective. So, Work on your homework assignments, okay? Do the drill skills. Uh, see what you can find out. Go ahead and start doing some videos, 20-second video. And several folks this week have sent in videos, and I appreciate it. We, I sent them back and said, we need to do this, and we need to do that. That's what coaches do, but, and, and you can do it on your own, and we'll all learn together. Do that video. We'll learn how to put it on YouTube and go forward. Give me those five marketable profit centers and we'll be able to help you with your business plan. Moving now into business plan discussion. 
again, if you have something that you want to interrupt me on and ask a question, just Can unmute. you go back one slide? <laughs> back one slide, this one? Who am I talking to? Oh, that's to that. Okay, all right. Got a question about that? Just to make sure y'all did get all the slides, correct? Yeah. All the study guides. Yeah, and I mailed out yeah. to some of you as well. Okay. All right, you got it, Janae? Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. And that's perfectly fine. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to talk about business plans now. Basically, we're going to look at 10 different steps related to your business planning and things for you to ask. What is the plan? Why do you want it? How about something with timeline? How do the models work? How are they going to play into this? Uh, how are we going to connect these models to become our business plan? Uh, now, there's also such a thing as a structured, really structured, sophisticated plan. I want you to know about that, even though it may not apply to you. You need to know about it. Uh, understanding the importance of, of business ownership and selling stock, startup funds. Uh, it's an absolutely imperative that we start building your confidence so you'll feel good about moving forward and you'll be able to take these steps. And then we don't need to believe and trust in ourselves and each other. So why do we want a business plan, number one? Kind of easy, uh, easy question. Some people say that. And I'll have to start out saying, as Brad said earlier, we are, uh, in this world of businesses, you ride up and down the road and you'll see a lot of businesses on both sides of the road. And I will guarantee you that most of them have nothing about a business plan in there. The owners took it over from their dads or they watched somebody else or they just took business as it came and you know, just kind of rolled with the flow. Well, there was a time you could kind of do that, but that day has passed. Even if your business is established for 64 years like mine is, I have to have a business plan because the competition staying on top of your game is telling you you need to know what's happening around you and just not float down the river on an interview. You need to know what's out there and uh, make adjustments to keep your business viable. Also, there's a lot of things coming your way. There is hurricanes and tornadoes and competitors and bankruptcies here and people lying to you over there. There are a lot of ex uh, unexpected pitfalls and expenses that can sink your ship. Your business plan is no help. You prevent that, and that's one reason we talk about it. What's, what's the bottom line on that business plan? It is what's left. We're going to estimate what your income is going to be. We're going to estimate what your expenses are going to be. Subtract the expenses from the income and come up with what's left. And keep our fingers crossed that it's black ink, which means we, we've got positive cash flow. But if it's red ink, then we know we're going to need to make some changes. That it probably means in some of our profit centers there was not enough demand. And one of our, our 40 uh, drill skills is NDCP, no demand, change the plan. Let me tell you, as your, as your business coach, we're not going to throw that business plan away. No, we're going to modify it. We're going to tear it down, modify it until it is a good plan with what's left. What is the number we want at what's left? It's your goal. It's your goal, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Now, if you're doing the side hustle, that is, you don't keep your present job or you've got a steady income, and this side hustle is in addition to what you still got going on, which is a good thing. I want to say to you that is a very good thing, and you still need a business plan. However, we'll look at it a whole lot different. We might just look at your business plan as if it's another marketable profit center in your overall business situation. So uh, knowing that's going to be important as you start putting your business plan together. And because a, 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 a business that we lots of times talk about, Brad, is one that's a standalone, it would have a, uh, all the factors in the cost of doing business plugged into its uh, expenses, where if you're adding a side hustle, 
probably and hopefully we're not going to have as much cost of doing business involved. So we need to be flexible and always know that's why I hate to use a structured, sophisticated business plan with entrepreneurs getting started, especially inside hustle businesses. So we'll talk about that. But it's a good thing because you don't have some advantages with a side hustle. Less stress and it's not your primary income. Lower startup costs because you're already established and, and probably have a lot of the tools that you need already. You've already got established customer contacts. So you know a lot of people already. So maybe uh, getting started with targeted customers is really easier. And again, you'll have a lower cost of business. So this is a pat on the back for those people doing the side hustle. Uh, in, in doing that business plan, hopefully it's going to be a whole lot easier. But there's a caution here I've got to tell you about. And I've seen this happen lots of times. I don't want your maybe side hustle um, uh, endeavor to damage your guaranteed income you've got coming in now. So as we move forward here at your own pace, we always want to remember that this is about time and you don't want your startup investments to be spent at the, at the, uh, at the cost to your uh, standard business that you're doing. We want to think about the time that you're giving to your new side hustle. It's this time now that's basically that you've got this non-productive and that you can do this. Great, let's go for it. But if this is time that's going to take away from your steady income that you're depending on and, and you're going to reduce that income because of your side hustle, you need to recognize that up front and make sure that the business plan takes that into consideration. Let's get a little uh, diet sprite here. I want to talk about two documents. And I will refer to them as pieces of paper. They might be a computer file or word file on your computer, but I don't refer to them as pieces of paper. The first one, we're going to talk about timeline goals. That will be a six month planner that you can start tonight. You can start your business plan as a six month planner tonight, and I'll challenge each and every one of you to do it. Whether it's for a side hustle or a, a marketable profit center or the whole business as a whole. If you don't have a timeline, then it's going to be real hard to set priorities. If you don't have a timeline established, it's going to be really hard to know if you're on time. So we want us to be able to start feeling secure and that we're making progress. And the best way to do that is to put together a plan and then try to stay to it to use that setting priorities to get there. That will be our plan. The second pieces of paper we're going to be talking about are going to be individual sheets for individual profit centers. If you don't give me five marketable profit centers, I don't tell you we're going to have at least five sheets of paper that we're going to be calling models. And the profit centers will be income models because they're bringing in money. And then we're going to look at all the different ways we're going to spend money in your business. And each one of those uh, types of ways we'll spend money, like for utilities, uh, like for salaries, like for insurances, like for transportation, each one of those will represent another piece of paper each with a title as expense models. Now, we're going to take our expense models and add them all up. This is our estimated cost of doing business. And then we're going to take all of our income models and add them up. That's going to be our black ink, and that's going to be our estimated revenue flow coming into the business over whatever period of time you decide to go with. I don't be referring to six months because that's fairly easy to work with tonight, but some people will start out with a year or more. The fact of the matter is we actually don't have to be in business and active for a while before we can make the adjustments in our business plan to be real. So that's why the planner is important because we can start moving forward uh, and putting ourselves in a position to make better adjustments. So we'll start out with that. Here's the pre-planner. I like to call this a six month business startup planner. And I've already laid it out for you as if we're looking at September through uh, February, the next six months. And that is a good target for a lot of businesses just getting started. 
Darcy, six months, I think, will probably suit you with what you've said. And, and uh, uh, Jeff, you've got a couple of business started up. Six months probably right on target for what you're up to, watching the progress that you're making. Uh, Cheryl, same for you. And, and, and Janae, I know that you're uh, uh, kind of struggling with getting started, so this might help you a lot. So during the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth months, there's certain things that's got to be done. And these may apply to you. They probably will. But if they don't, don't worry about it. Just strike through it and move on. But what I want to encourage you to do is to do this six-month planner and share it with me or share it with Brad. And I'll guarantee you, anyone that's been around can probably help you see some things that you might want to consider changing, adding, or thinking, talking about. That's why you want to have a coach or an advisor. So during the first six months, and while today is the 19th, we started this on September 15th, let's determine the products and services that you're going to have to sell. That's that marketable uh, profit center list that I'm asking you to give me a menu of. Let's go ahead and put some price values on it too. Yep, because we don't need the price value on it to determine what kind of volume we have to have. Now, you've listened to me and listened to other folks, and you have already determined that maybe I need some more studying or reading on merchandising, how to price my products, uh, forecasting business issues, negotiating, selling face-to-face -face and selling on the Internet. Uh, if there's some skills that you feel pretty sure that you uh, need to enhance, then write those down. Send me a copy of them, and I'll start sending you study guides or asking Brad to, to help us find some time to have a webinar on this topic or another. In other words, you have, you, you're in charge here. I'm not. We're just here to, to support you and, and motivate you, okay? Next 30 days, starting October 15th, after next week and week four, you will understand the importance of having targeted customer groups. That's a key factor in moving forward with a sustainable business. So we don't start putting those groups together. We don't figure out how to do the surveys to see what kind of volume we might have. And also, we don't start making a real list of what our startup cost may or may not be. Third month, starting November 15th, getting into Thanksgiving season now. All right, you're sure that you're moving forward, so let's talk about getting a, a checking account as we're going to be spending some money here shortly. And I want you to keep your business money separate from your personal money, so you'll need a business checking account. When you do that, that means you're going to need an EIN number, which is another little thing that we can help you with. If you're going to go to a, a bricks and mortar place, it's time to know what that location is, because there's a lot to find out if you're going to uh, be involved with another property. There's insurance, there's codes, there's room, how does it fit, how, how, what kind of marketing you don't have to do, or, or signage we you need. If you don't have a, a standalone business, we need to find that location and think about it. Yep, after, after the next two weeks, you will be ready to write your marketing campaign together and put a budget on it. What do you mean budget, Steve? I don't tell you right now that Marketing and advertising is a lot like a wood-burning stove. You can have a wood-burning stove, and so therefore you can say you got a marketing plan. But if you don't put the wood in a wood-burning stove, you're not going to realize any heat or benefit. And if you don't invest some money in a marketing and advertising plan, you're not going to get a return on investment. Make sense? So I don't give you a number right now. If your proposed revenue coming in is is a a hundred dollars for the next six months, then I want you to think about six and a half percent being a, a startup point for a marketing budget. And that's to say that for every hundred dollars that I want to bring in, I probably ought to be planning on spending six and a half percent or six dollars and fifty cents. I'm keeping those numbers down low. However, when a little bit later in the night, you can see how 6.5% can really go up. But generally, if you don't make an investment, you're not going to get a return on an investment. 
fourth month, it's time to start marketing. We're 60 days away from selling. It's time to let the world know we're here and alive and we're serious. If you got that location, it's time to start thinking about putting some furniture and fixtures in there, making sure you are staying with the codes all the way through it. 30 days away, it's time to buy stock. Get, get ready, take pictures. Let's get it out there on Facebook. Let's get it on our website. Let's get it on Google. Let people know exactly what we got. And with the look and hook marketing, to start creating interest coming soon. Uh, train staff to sell or train yourself to sell what you've got going on. And we, we'll do a little bit of this in, in week six, but there's a whole lot of opportunities out there for you to learn about how to sell, how to close deals, how to negotiate, how to price your products. You want to do that. Okay, now it's time to open up. And we don't have a grand opening. We will bring in a lot of people, all the people we can, and we're going to catch as many fish as we can because we're going to put a fresh bait in the water. Yes, indeed. Promotions, lots of them, fresh bait in the water, and here they come. Wrong. Not. We're not going to have that grand opening or spend the big boats to bring people in until we have a soft opening first, until we test test our people, test our products, test our, 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 our point of sale equipment, make sure we got our bookkeeping ready to take this in. We know how to charge and collect and pay the taxes. In other words, we need a few weeks of what I call soft business. Yeah, start making a little bit of money, but don't spend a lot of money to bring a group of people in because the chances are that if you do that, you're going to fail to satisfy them. And your objective at, for a grand opening is to bring a lot of people in and for them when they leave to be saying, man, I like this place. I know I have to tell other people to come here. I want to come back here and do business. I want to become a raving fan customer. Your grand opening is not about selling a billion dollars worth of stuff and you never sold anything before. Your grand opening is all about creating customer relationships that will bring them back every time. That's your goal. And that is what the pre-planner is about, to move you from where you are now to a point in time in the near future. This is six months, but a point in time in the future that you're going to say, I'm ready to bring it on. I've got my house in order. I am trained. I'm ready to do business. Because if you don't get yourself ready, you're not going to be able to satisfy those customers and they're going to talk junk about you instead of talk good things about you. That's why the pre-planner is good. Plus, every day that you start on this pre-planner and you make this list and you achieve it, your priorities are working, you'll start really adding on to your self-confidence. So please, listen to me. Next, let's say you're already in business and you just want to add certain profit center, new marketable profit centers. You can use this same type of planner to get ready to start marketing something new. And this is real. Every year you're in business hereafter, you'll be doing this as you make changes in your business. You'll learn, I just don't need to try to do this overnight. I need to get my ducks in order and have a pre-planner and do it one step at a time. So when I do bring this new profit center on board, We'll be ready, and it'll work well. All right, we're moving to those second types of papers now, which is your models. Your model is just a small little things that we do to bring money in or to spend money out in groups to determine estimates on what our income is going to be. So I want you to have some blank pieces of paper. This is the top of the piece. This is the top half which is saying I've got a blank line to here. I, I know what I'm after, income, how many we're going to sell, what the estimated revenue is, and the same thing about expenses. So that's, that's, that's looking at an individual. And then the bottom piece of the paper over a six-month period, what's that going to do for me? How much money is that going to generate? How much am I going to have to spend? And then what's left? Now, what's left here is very important. And we need to kind of agree on what we're going to call this. What's left in this course means margin. 
not profit. Please don't say profit. It's margin. Because we're looking at individual models and what kind of revenue we are estimating they can bring into our business. We're not looking at the overall company profit yet. That will come later. But right now we're talking about what's left from that model. And so re remember to start calling that our margin. So one of the really cool used uh, businesses, entrepreneur businesses, that people can get into for a reasonably small amount of money for what the, the income can be is the used automobile business, used car dealers. Now, through the years, a lot of jokes about used car dealers, about selling junk and lying and all this times of misrepresenting and doing this stuff. And I'm sure there has been a very few of them that have done it all. But on average, most people that's been in the used car business for a long time pretty much do it right by the book and do it well. And, and people, families do business with them year after year after year. I've got several used car uh uh, dealers that I've done business with for 40 plus years and, and still doing business with their children now. So I know there's some real good ones out there. Let's kind of focus on that as, and you just pretend with me that you're getting into the used car business. Well, where does it all start? It all starts with the dealers going to the auction sales. The dealers going to the auction sales and there's a, within, there's six or eight of them within a hundred miles of, uh, of right here where you are in North Carolina. And the, you can see the cursor on the screen, the people buying are all over here. These are the dealers, licensed dealers get to go to these auctions. Well, for the last two or three hours, they've been out here in this warehouse up here at the top where the uh, car is coming out. They've been out there looking at all these cars and making notes on which cars they might have an interest in buying. So as the auctioneer rolls them through, these just roll through, and as they come through, it'll stop in front, and then people will take bids on them. If you have cable TV, there's one of the channels that show one of these going on almost every night somewhere, classic cars and such as that, and you'll get a gist for what's going on here. But it's on a much smaller scale over in Kentley, North Carolina, or Greensboro, or Lumberton, or there, actually there's one here in Dunn as well. So let's talk about the used car business. The dealer goes there at auction and buys them, and they bring them back to their car lot. And there we put the flags and the signs on it, and that's what you see out in your communities, is to use cars for sale. Well, in this market, the most popular used vehicle in the whole world, the whole United States, at used car dealerships, and the ones they sell the most of, are those cars that sell for around $6,000. That's the upper place that you can buy a fairly dependable car with tires that hold air and a transmission that works that doesn't smoke so bad and to clear the mosquitoes out. Usually you can find a pretty good ride for $6,000. That beats the heck out of walking. Okay? $6,000 is a good number. And a, a good dealership in a decent uh, community and location will sell 15 cars a month. They will, they sell a car every other day, 15 cars a month. And if they do that, over a six month period, they will have sold 90 cars at $6,000 each. That's $540,000, half a million dollars and more. And this is where I, you can see what big ticket sales can give you the opportunity to do. 540 grand over a six month period. And that's revenue, right? That's how much it came in. Now, when they went to that auction, they knew they were gonna be buying $6,000 cars and not paying but $4,000 for them because the fair market value on this car is probably about $5,400. So they're not gonna pay more than four grand for it. And if they bought these cars at $4,000 each and bought 90 of them, then they spent $360,000 on buying those cars. Spent three sixty dollars to bring in five forty. dollars What's left? What's the margin? $180,000 margin. Available money 
to go buy more cars, to invest in the business, to do whatever. Now keep in mind, this used car lot, this is the model only for $6,000 cars. They I have a model for $10,000 cars, $15,000 cars, $20,000 cars, pickup trucks, bicycles, I don't know. They, they will have a different model here for different types of sales so they can gauge and estimate the income. That's right. So we call this $180,000 margin. And that's, this is a, a marketable profit center, $6,000 used cars uh, model. It will plug in $180,000 black ink on our six month planner. Now, the other type of business that we might be in, and there's two or three smaller types that could be considered, but these are the main ones, is when you're selling time for money, when you are mowing grass, pressure washing, being a lawyer or a dentist or an accountant, or someone giving webinars and seminars, we're selling time for money. And if that's the case, we'll have to use a different type of structure, a different sheet of paper, blank sheet for our different models. So first of all, uh, six months, well, excuse me, in time for money, I want to encourage you to have a four day work week, four day work week that you build your business plan around. That leaves you a fifth day to take care of personal business. That leaves you a sixth day to create new business or to go out and call on new customers. Gives you a seventh day to have a life, go to church, be with your family, do what you'd like to do, go fishing. But the four day week is what we're gonna plan on so that we're pretty much guaranteed that if it rains or something goes wrong during one of those four days, we'll have backup days to fill in the difference. Or if we really are a type A workaholic and we're gonna work five days on that four day work week, then we're gonna see our income really go up due to hard extra work. Kind of what it is. So we would have a sheet that might look like this. We're gonna to need to decide in our work, how many appointments a day can you schedule for your type of expertise? How many jobs a day can you go do with your expertise? And right now for this sheet of paper, I'm gonna use four appointment slots a day. And if I have four slots a day, I don't be able to estimate how much money I'm gonna be bringing in. And I'll be the same, do the same thing we did before and try to estimate our cost each time. So let's say that you're a graphic designer or in the marketing business, Kind of like what Cheryl may be doing. I'm just not quite sure, Cheryl, uh, how you don't uh, break this down, and also you as well, uh, Darcy. But at any rate, if you're going to be interviewing people and selling time for money, let's say that your uh, fourth uh, appointments a day, you don't put a value on them at $150 each. And if that's what you do, then your each day should bring you in revenues of $600. Four days a week, $600. $2,400 a week. But we're gonna look at six months now, and if that's the case, it would be bringing you in $57,600. $57,600 for six months. Let's say that you had established looking at your personal budget or whatever it is that you're gonna add on to, if this is your, uh, uh, what if this is your side hustle, how much these appointments are gonna be worth uh, costing you. And if you put a figure on them at $200, six months, you're gonna spend $19,200. Or maybe you're gonna take $19,200 out of the income you've got coming in now because the time that you're not spending it. It's still gonna be a cost and an expense, but you just need to weigh it out which way it is. And if that's the case, we're gonna spend 19.2 to make 57.6, which in six months means we're gonna have $38,400 margin. Extra money we didn't have before. Yeah, that's what a side hustle can do for you if we all plan and execute it. What do we call this $38,400? We call it margin.
Now, oftentimes in selling time for money, I'm going to encourage you to diversify and add some products that you can be selling as well. Because you can see now that if I'm getting paid for my time and I can bring in some, by the way, extra margin, uh, profit margin type products to sell, then we'll start stacking our profits or stacking our margins even more. So here's how the plan will look, and everybody's plan will look a little different. We're going to take these individual sheets of paper, just like their little Lego blocks here, and plug them in. And let's say that, let's say that uh, you've got a different style of business, like a transportation service. I'm going to tell you that for every different type of transportation service, uh, every different type of business away from the norm, it will require some special consideration. So if you're transporting, indeed you're selling your time for money, but indeed you are also got lots of things to consider, such as uh, time and expense on your car or your vehicle. You got uh, uh, overhead costs to consider, more insurances. Uh, you got gasoline to, to consider, and how many how many uh, visits you can make a day to get around and make money. And it, when you figure it out, the key to making money in a transportation business is having more uh, trips for a certain amount of money that helps stack your profits. And if you don't have that number of trips then your uh, profit or your margins are going to go way down. So you need to know what it is that's break even because there's a good chance if you don't, you might be out there working all day and losing money if you take on the different types of jobs. So we always have to set that income goal for every day and every week, find out what the advertised price is going to bring in and put some averages on it and figure it out. There's nothing cut and dry or nothing black and white when we're doing this type of estimating, and that's what I, I really want you to consider. But you got to pay your bills, you got to pay your taxes, and you got to pay yourself. And hopefully, there's going to be something left after you, we figure all this out to reinvest in the business, and that will be the margin. So, using these type of models, you can get to where you need to be. But our goal is to take our models, income and expense, plug them in connect them together, and at the end of the process, we're going to have a business plan. A business plan based on projected income, such as that. Now, I'm using the word model a lot here, and let's just clarify this. You can put a lot of definitions on model, but I'm keeping it as simple as I can. What we're going to sell, how much it's going to cost us, what kind of margin is left. It could be as simple as going over right there in, in, in Dublin, going up to uh, Houston Peanuts, buying a, a, a wholesale box of uh, peanuts for $10, take them at, down to this county fair and sell them for $20. You made yourself $10 margin. I've got on here $10 profit because that's what most people would say, but I want us to start saying margin. So no matter how sophisticated or not it is, we can make a profit center out of it and keep up with it. Most of the time, you can do a model within an hour or two very easily. If you're having trouble with it, I can help you with it, but you don't need to give me that list of profit centers, and I'll help get you started or see how far along you get, and then we'll take it from there. There's not a lot that Brad and I hadn't done through the years that we can apply some things that we've learned to help you, and if we don't know how, I'll guarantee you right now, we knew somebody that can. So each time we do this, it's going to be uh, kind of a repetitive, and you'll learn to see how that works in your business as well. Any questions so far? Well, look at here. This is the business plan. This can be your business plan. Each one of these items at the top of the list, <clears throat> instead of saying marketable profit center, on my sheet, on your sheet, it'll actually name what it is that you're selling or doing. And we're going to put them all down, whether it's 15 or 20 or 30 or 50. We're going to list each one of them down, and that was thought of it, estimating how much margin is going to contribute to our, to our good. But here's the wrinkle. 
Here's why coming to this uh, class and learning about the different types of profit center make the big difference. Beside each one of your marketable profit centers, we're going to need to write down, you are going to write down whether this profit center is going to increase daily traffic. This profit center is strictly designed to bring in lots of new customers and you have adjusted your prices accordingly. You know, list down here, is this profit center designed to help me make some high margins? Some really good margins, profits? Is this profit center all about creating repeat business, continuing contract business, leases? How can I keep these customers on board? Keep them coming back. Is this profit center designed so that I'll have big ticket sales? Okay. You see, we want at least five marketable profit centers, but we also want at least one each, one each of the three different types of profit centers. Otherwise, we will not have the sustainability that we want in our business. We'll also have listed here any other, we don't add up the revenues from, from the profit centers. And then we don't have another line here, if your name's right here under subtotal. We don't have another line there that's any money that we're bringing in and investing in our company. Money that you borrow, money that you pull out of your bank account, whatever extra money you come in, and we'll call that non, uh, it's not money that you're making through the business uh, cycle, but money that you're just invested in the company. That's a really important line because money that you invest in your company is a loan. You're loaning money to your company. And as it gets up and running and starts making money, that company gets to pay you back. And it pays you back that money, and that money coming back to you is tax-free. That money coming back to you also, you can the company uh, should pay you interest on it. The interest will be taxable, but it is good. It's a good way to earn some income. So if you've got money in the bank now and you say, I'm, I feel safer with my money in the bank than I do in my own company, then I'll tell you that maybe you'd be better off with investing in your own company. Because one, you can pay yourself a lot more interest. Number two, it really helps you to have and be able to prove that you have invested in your own company if you're asking someone else to loan you money. Two important factors. Okay, let's look at the red ink now. The red ink is different pieces of paper that represent different types of expense uh, uh, categories that you have added up and estimated that you're gonna spend X of money, X amount of money on insurance. X amount of money on utilities, X amount of money on rent, uh, and so forth, staffing, uh, debt payments. We'll list down all the ways that you're going to take money out of your business checking account. When we talk about bookkeeping, if we were talking about that, right now you are basically looking at a bookkeeping chart of accounts. Each one of these different profit centers and each one of these expense items will become an expense item in your bookkeeping system or on your QuickBooks pages. All this ties together in the circle. But what are we after? That bottom line down there that says what's left. Because that is going to tell us if we are generating more money than we are spending. And hopefully we're going to generate at least enough money to meet your goals and maybe more. And if we're not, we are not going to throw it away. We're going to end DCP. We're going to change that plan by adding profit centers to add margin or cut expenses somewhere to improve that bottom line. And that's how business plan works. Very similar maybe to the home budget that you're operating with right now. This works really well and it has for a lot of people for a lot of years. Now, just to help you get started or your mind started and you don't have your models done yet, I'm giving you a business plan, a, a graphic here, just to write down and print out and just make notes with with your pencil. Uh, just make check marks on what applies and what don't apply to you 
and that'll help you organize your actual business plan page. Lots of things here to consider. I went through a lot of them. <clears throat> some will affect your business, some will not. If you have any questions about any of these different items, I'll be glad to talk to you. But the answer is that we're after it. What's left? What's that? What's what's left in it for the business or for me? Okay, that's the general rule. I hope I didn't wear you out with that. I don't want you to catch analysis paralysis, and I don't think you will. Let's get started. Let's get a name on your business. Just put a name there. That is a start. And then we'll check that out, as Brad mentioned. We'll check it out with the Secretary of State and find out if anybody else has got that business name. After next week, we're going to start writing a targeted marketing plan. A targeted marketing plan. That is to say, we're going to think real hard about what we're going to push for and who we're laying that marketing uh, money at. We know we want to be online in 2023 and 24. The internet is going to play more and more influence on our business, just like it's doing with us tonight. So maybe you need to hire uh, a webmaster to help you move forward. And indeed, if that's the case, I, I suggest that you, uh, that you go for it. However, if you are waiting for someone to give you a free ride on internet experience, then basically, if it's free, it's not going to have much value to it. You'll be better off to go ahead and take the lead here that we're talking about tonight with your Google account, and your Facebook account and your YouTube accounts to help move your business in, in a, uh, a very important, quicker way. So but there will be a time that maybe you want to hire someone to help you with your Facebook. Through the years and through the academy, we've got lots of folks that have come through these same classes that would love to help you create your own uh, anything that you want to do as virtual assistants at very low affordable pricing. So when you're ready to move forward and get someone to help you, then we've got a good list of folks that would uh, be glad to talk to you. Now your business plan, again, can be as sophisticated as you want to make it, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> or as simple as it can be. But if you were going to college, if you were going to Harvard Business School or the University of North Carolina or Pembroke, uh, uh, UNC Wilmington, in a business uh, admin class, a professor is going to stand up there and tell you that a business plan has seven essential product, uh, parts to it. And if you don't have the seven essential parts, then you don't have a sophisticated business plan. Well, I don't tell you that may be true, but I really don't buy it because I know that you have to kind of get started in business before you can end up with a sophisticated plan. But I want you to know about it and to know how right now you can start building your plan so that it is similar to that and you can grow it into it if you want to. The first part of a sophisticated plan is the executive summary. It's the first thing in the plan. It's the last thing that's written. Bottom line, what is it all about? It's an appetizer. Just like you see previews on TV for movies that are coming up, they tell you enough enough of the story to get you interested in it. That's what an executive summary is. It is there to get the reader interested enough to keep reading. In our simple plan that you're doing, simply give me your name, the business name. If you determine your domain name, the name of your website, that's the domain name. And let's go ahead and plug in a dollar value here. Tell me how much money you want to take away from the business in the next six weeks, six months. How much money you want the business to earn. In other words, gross sales, okay? Or how much profit do you want the company to make in the first six months? That number is kind of important because the next question that I would want you to kind of give thought to, how many hours are you going to put plug into the company during the next six months of your own time talking to customers? Selling, 
actually selling how many hours are you going to spend? Because when we know, when you know the answer to that question, how many hours, we're going to be able to divide that number of hours into the amount of revenue that you are looking for, and voila, you know and I know immediately how much money you need to generate per hour. <laughs> exactly. Full circle back around to how can I find these answers out with the information that you give it. Then when we need to know how much money we need to generate per hour, that makes that business plan and all these profitable uh, market, uh, uh, marketable profit centers have all the importance in the world because that's where that money is going to come from. And, and you'll be amazed at how things kind of fit together. Number two is the company description. That's just a general summary of what the company is all about, what type of corporations it's going to be if incorporated, who you're going to serve, and so forth. But all I want you to do right now is to simply write down on paper, kind of like Darcy was telling Brad earlier, what is your company going to do and what's it all about. Very simple, just a few lines. You don't want to give away anything here. Just give a good description so that the reader kind of can get into it a little bit. Number three is about what you're selling, either products or services, getting into the details on them such as that, uh, laying it all out there page after page, uh, uh, forecast after forecast. But you're going to do that with your profit market center. You, you'll be taking that care of that already. What are we always after? What's left? So let's keep it simple. Uh, well, I'm not going to worry about uh, rounding things off to the next dollar. I'll round them off to the next $100. Uh, we'll, we'll think in terms of not worrying about whether we're going to sell 52 of something. We're going to say whether we're going to sell, we're going to sell 50 of them or 60 of them because we're estimating now. We're just estimating and it's important that you do that, and it does have great value. So that's important for our revenues as well. And we come up to the end of the line on that page, and we have red ink. We're not going to throw it away. We're going to find more marketable profit centers, ways that we can increase our margins or reduce expenses, or maybe we're going to shuffle things around and just recalculate. At any rate, it's not going to be very difficult to do when you've got your models. Maybe if someone has come to you with a possible a uh, scheme to make a lot of money. Here's an example. Someone said, I'll give you $305,000 if you'll go buy a truck and haul my stuff around the country uh, for a few months, and during the off time, I don't care what you do with your truck. Pretty good plan. And then some people might say, wow, that's three hundred five grand. I don't go for it. What I want you to be controlled enough to do is, wow, what a great plan. I don't go tear this apart, write a business model around it, and see what's left. Because, indeed, when you break it down, you can probably tell within a few hours how much real chance there is that this can be profitable for you, and then decide if it's worth the risk. So lots of things to do, lots of ways to use these models. You're getting ready to buy something. And you think, well, it's going to cost me this. But when you actually get down and figure it out, as I did on what's it going to cost to put a truck and a trailer on the road, you may find out that what you thought was going to cost $3,000 is going to cost you $13,000. So always be willing to take the basic information and apply it uh, as a business planner or a business model to see how it might actually work for you. So we're right back now right back to what we're after. This is the plum for each one of you. And I'm looking so forward to getting uh, these blanks from you guys, these information's plugged in here, describing your different uh, profit centers and what type they are, describing what your estimated costs are, and such as that. And this is where being a, 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 a startup hustle, side hustle business, uh, you'll really see as, as that type of business that your ability to create revenues is going to be real strong, and these red line items are going to be much smaller because you've already in business or you've already gotten started or you already have some resources. And really important, from your present business or income sources, you're going to plug in money on this line right here, invested or borrowed funds, 
you don't have some money to plug in there to help yourself get started. So as a side hustle business, this uh, a chart probably is going to look a whole lot better and actually may become your business plan, just this sheet of paper right here, as you uh, break it down into different things that you're going to be doing in your side hustle. Just keep it simple. Let's make it work for you. In a sophisticated plan, you don't need a market analysis. That's when you look at all the deep studies and what's happening in the market, what the trends are, or who's out there, what's happening worldwide, those kind of things. But all I want you to do is talk about the area that you're going to serve. Maybe make a list of your uh, targeted low-hanging fruit customers, which we'll talk about a lot next week, and uh, list your competitors. Now's a good time for you to actually list down maybe your top five competitors and start checking them out on the internet or going to see them and see what's happening there and start making notes. You want to see what they're doing right. You want to see what they're doing wrong. That way you can help make uh, your business plan uh, serve your needs better and the customers want to come to you instead of them. <clears throat> Number five is strategy and implementation. Well, it's a whole lot more than just I don't buy low so I can sell high. Our strategy and impl implementation is how we're going to get there, who's going to do it, and how we're going to make it work. Here's some details you might want to list. Excuse me. <coughs> What are your primary marketing tools going to be? Signage, internet activity, constant promotions, email campaigns, a database, raving fan customer programs, loyalty customer loyalty programs, those kind of things. How are you going to plan your promotions? I don't have email campaigns once every two weeks. I don't have signage that I change every six months. Those kind of things. How many staffers will you have? How many people are going to help you? I don't want you to give their names to them, but their job titles. I need two clerks. I need one delivery person. I need one person to help me with bookkeeping. I need someone else to help me with my social media campaigns. These are, don't have to be full-time jobs. As a matter of fact, I would rather them not be, but virtual assistants or part-time labor. Think about the help. If you're planning on doing it all yourself, write it down there. And then we, you have to ask your, answer the question, are you trained to do all this different type of work? When are you going to be open? What are your hours? Again, the beauty of a side hustle business is an internet base is you're open 24-7. That doesn't mean you're going to answer email 24-7, but that's the beauty of having an internet presence, that you can indeed be all things to all people <laughs> time-wise because people in California can send you email during the night that you can open and answer the next morning. So keep that in mind, what are your operating hours going to be, and you'll really see then how internet activity can enhance that for you. If you don't have a location, a bricks and mortar, that's going to bring in a, a lot of different talk in your business planning. You want to talk about what you need, how many square feet, what part of town you want to be in, what your goals are, but you don't have to give an address right now. Matter of fact, it's probably better off if you don't write the address in your plan because that may give someone else the idea that, hey, I think I'll go start that business, and they may go rent it or buy it out from under you. But whatever it is, I don't tell you, there's going to be expenses involved, and here's a good startup list for you to save and consider. And a word of experience will tell you, if you're going into an old building, you're going to revamp it for your new business, whatever you think you can see wrong with it right now, and whatever estimate we put down, the chances are, are really good it will double or even more before you're ready to open up. Unless you've had a lot of experience doing this. So uh, Brad can help you with this, and I can too, uh, when you get to this point in time. But you're going to need an estimate on how much money is going to be spent on that property. 
And here's where I'll tell you that as a, a new renter coming in, and if the property needs all this amount of work, maybe the landlord ought to fix it up for you and adjust his rental rate. Or maybe he wants to say to you, okay, you invest and get it ready to do business, and I'll give you four or five or six months free rent to compensate the money you're spending on my property. Because when you spend money on somebody else's property, it stays with them. You need to remember that, okay? Hey, Steve, if I could, if I could add something real quick on that. Please do. If, if you sign you a lease, lease. <laughs> mute me real quick. If you sign a lease, make sure you have a lawyer look at it because a lot of times when you sign that lease and something goes wrong with the mechanical, like the air conditioning, the heat, the plumbing, you get to fix it at your cost. So make sure that you have a lawyer look at the lease contract to make sure you understand what you're committing to. That's a very good point, Brad. Um, yeah, a lesson well learned from my own experience, but I'll let it go at that. No doubt. And when you share with us the amount of money that you're paying on your lease, and we see what your estimated income is, we don't have to be real critical for you and maybe give you a wake-up call, because a lot of businesses, and I'll use the example of uh, food businesses, restaurants, bars, and grills, are, are so easy to point to. They're so excited about getting started, pay that lease payment, jump in that building, get things going, have a lot of customers. But all of a sudden learn that that rental money comes out of what's left, comes out of that uh, revenues, comes out of your profit dollars. And it takes a lot of hamburger sales or beer sales uh, to end up with $3,000 a month or more. And it takes a lot of sales to end up with $1,500 a month or more after you pay your help and so forth. So that rental contract, the amount you're paying has to balance with your business plan and your estimates uh, to make it work. So thank you, Brad. That's a really good advice. The lawyer can help you with, with, with the legal entities of it that are very important. But uh, the business side of it, knowing what type of volume you hope to have is even more important. So think about that as you go. Organizational and team management, who's going to be helping you, who's going to be doing what, list down your uh, your organizational chart. Don't put names on it, just put job titles, because each one of those job titles, we're going to add those up when we have your expense model for uh, for wages and salaries to be paid. So we, we need to know about how much money you're going to be paying out. If you're hoping to have uh, investors or stockholders in your business, that's great. But just know there's a lot of difference in an investor and a partner. Uh, and, and you don't need to get confused on that. You also want to remember that if you want to maintain at least 51% of the stock in your company or you're not the boss. Other people can fire you and run you off and you have to leave your investment behind. So don't go out here saying, hey, if you'll give me this amount of money, I'll give you X amount of stock in my business and this X amount of stock in my business. So you have three investors that you're giving 20% of your business to, well, when they add that up, that's 60% and leaves you with 40. You're a loser. So don't go out doing this ahead of time. Talk to me, talk to Brad, talk to your attorney. Don't take on investors or partners unless you know the full ramifications of it. And on your business planner, you want to list down how many people are involved uh, so that you can go up there and see how much debt you're going to have to pay back or in what uh, calendar of payments you're going to pay it back. <clears throat> if you're going for a business that you're going to have to go borrow a lot of money from a bank or an institution, then I don't tell you right now, they're going to want to see your previous financial records. They're going to want to see at least three years and sometimes five years of your tax returns. So if for whatever reason you hadn't filed your taxes, I don't tell you you need to do it or an investor is not going to talk to you. They are not going to go into business with someone that they think may have tax liens uh, on them, and I don't blame them. I want neither. So sometimes you have to get your house in order before you can go apply for a loan. Lots and lots of financial history. Say, I ask you more questions than you ever dreamed. 
because you don't have to sign a, to get a loan, you don't have to sign what's called a, a, uh, <laughs> a, 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 a plan where the, you're signing on everything, a guarantee, a personal guarantee, excuse me, it went blank there. You don't need to sign a personal guarantee, which means not only are you financing the assets of the business, but you're also putting up for collateral all your assets right down to your toothbrush and your bulldog. So you need to do all your homework and make sure you got things squared away financially and a, and a financial statement listed out. <clears throat> so how are we gonna get this thing started? One, I want you to have the self-confidence that you need and deserve, and we're doing things here that'll help you. These 40 drill skills, as simple as each one of them is, when you put them all together, they add up to a big basket of self-confidence that leads to self-assurance. Self-assurance says, hey, I am on the right track, and I don't stay with it. Show some leadership now. It's time for you to step forward, say, I don't be the best business person I can be by showing the world what I can do, and I don't lead the way. I don't be the leader in this class. Uh, I don't I do my homework. I'm going to send in everything. And therefore, before this class is over, people out there in the world will already be getting the news about what my business is about, and maybe I'll be making some money on it. Put together an organization of friends and family, of counselors, possible business people, targeted customer groups, people you know that can help you find customers. Have in your mind, who can I surround myself with that will be, invite, be happy for me, be excited for me and my business and help me along. And when you add all that together, it's a great big bowl of ice cream and banana pudding and enthusiasm because you are putting together a winning situation. If you're in it to win it, as they say, these are the ingredients that help you get there. So let's wrap it up. Are you waiting for something? Old Papa Steve over here is telling you it's time to stop waiting and get motivated and start doing this homework. I want to see some videos from you guys. I want to see some profit centers from you guys so you can work on your business plans. And next week when we talk about marketing and the week after how to find customers, you're going to be so excited you're not, you can't wait to, to make it happen. Believing in yourself, as I believe in you, is so important. Just notice you can do it. If an old, old uh, fellow whose who's, uh, cabinet doesn't have really sharp pencils in it like mine, if I can make it for all these years and, and, uh, and keep businesses going and never have to close one down or have a failure, uh, by golly, you can too, especially with all the help and resources that's available to you. Each step that you take along this way during the next six weeks, each and every step that you take will help you build more confidence that you're on the right path, and I'm going to assure you that you are. So let me say to you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want some questions from you tonight. We're going to stay online as long as you have questions to answer, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit. Uh, uh, any things at all that we can do to help you move forward, I want to do it. But mainly I want you to start working on those homework papers, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. So. Uh, you're welcome to turn on your microphones and we'll wrap it up here. Hey Steve, this is Joy Wynn with James Front Community College. Hey Joy, how are you tonight? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. You got any comments? I just wanted to make my appearance and let it, all the folks on the call know that um, at James Front Small Business Center, we certainly offer free counseling and free business guidance to each of you as well as sponsoring these courses. So I hope that you will reach out and take advantage as well as some new opportunities that we have to help with staffing and um, some funding resources. So James Front Community College Small Business Center, we're at West Park in Warsaw and I'm available to any of you at any point. That's so good. Have you had a chance to meet Brad yet? Brad and I have spoken several times. We haven't met in person. Well, okay, well, good. But it's so good to have both of you online. And thank you for those comments. And I agree. I'll certainly encourage folks to get the appointments and go uh, hire you guys as their uh, free business uh, consultants. Absolutely. Hey, Joy. 
And Joy, okay. I'd love to I'd love to talk to you as well to find out about your uh, resources. So uh, thanks for being online. And yeah, it's good to go look at all of our websites, especially in your general area, because we offer different seminars. We, you know, Joy has control of hers. I have control of mine. So if you don't have a topic, look, you know, there's Sand Hills Community College. There's James Front. I mean, there's a bunch of them out there. So make sure to use, again, like I said, North Carolina legislature approved uh, small business centers. Absolutely. So thank you all for doing that. And I enjoy working with, with uh, all of them in the area here and promoting all of them at the same time. No doubt about it. <clears throat> Janae, are you still with us? Darcy? Uh, Makey, is that the way we pronounce uh, Gibson there? How do you, uh, you want to talk to us a little bit? It's Mac. Just, Mac. Mac. All right. mm -hmm. And where are you located, Mac? I'm in Halifax. Fantastic. Love that area up there. What type of business are you uh, into or thinking about? Uh, I'm not sure right now. I used to uh, lease a truck, so I'm just learning now. I, I came out of it. I, I didn't do as well as I wanted to, so I want to make sure next time I go in, I'm doing what I need to do properly. Well, we're certainly glad to have you on board with us tonight, and I'll get you on our mailing list, and we'll let you know when we got other uh, other uh, programs coming up during the next, uh, uh, actually, 12 weeks. And, and if you didn't hear it, Mac, if, if you didn't hear it, I worked for FedEx and Roadway Express, so I've got a lot of experience, and FedEx Custom Critical, so a lot of experience in that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate you guys. Yes, indeed. All right, Darcy. Yeah, uh, one of my takeaways from tonight is um, my weakest link of my for myself is that um, you know not organization, but like the the whole um, business plan itself is in a whole kind of overwhelming. So tonight, as you broke it down, it was kind of like okay, just take it step by step and and go through piece by piece and, and as as long as I'm chipping away at it I'll I'll get to the to the goal. But that's definitely my um my weak point of but, and one thing I can say about that, Darcy, is because so many people are overwhelmed as I have been when I was like, Oh my gosh, I gotta do this but if you got resources and you do, obviously come to us because we can break it up because I had a person, a, a client I'm working with right now that she's like, I, you know, I just don't know what to say. I'm like, you know what? Just tell me about your business. Don't worry about it. Just tell me about it. And she came up with this great story of the business and she goes, but I can't do the finances. I'm like, don't worry about it. Let's talk about the finances. You know, where are your holdups? And that's what we're here for. You know what your business, you know what you want to do you know how you want to get there. And if you don't have a great handle on the expenses, that's not unusual. So, you know, that's what we're here for. And, you know, we can help you with that. So, you know, that's, that's a very normal comment. And a lot of people get too concerned about it. But if you don't have that business plan, you really don't know where you're going and how you're going to get there. I mean, that's my opinion. And talking with other people, and when I've gone to, you know, different lending institutions, so it's like, you know, first question, where's your business plan? And if you don't have it, it's like, oh, okay. And that's kind of how that conversation starts and doesn't go too much further. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not easily intimidated, so this is the one thing that intimidates me. So it's kind of like I don't, I don't want it to be the thing that holds me back the most just because, that's my weak spot. And um, no, I appreciate that I can reach out because the rest of it is kind of like I've done it. I've worked in, in really large, fast paced, um, high volume flower shops. And right now I'm in a more of um, a local one. So uh, the learning the do's, the very successful flower shop, and then the don'ts of the back end of you know how not to behave in a flower shop 
so it's that, it's that business plan that I'm I'm just putting the boxing gloves on it. <laughs> That's wonderful. Are you thinking of this uh, Darcy as being a side hustle, standalone business, or something that you'll do as additional income? No, it's it's it, I'm my plan is to make it my you know this is my career already. So I've been doing it for everybody else for so long, and why not work that hard for me? Absolutely, I understand. Well, I hope the uh, different options we gave you tonight will be very helpful for you. Yes. Absolutely. I'd like to add just one thing to that. Well, two things. One, as a previous business owner, I understand that we sometimes become intimidated and even embarrassed by what we do not know or understand so we don't have to reinvent the wheel because there have been pioneers before us that have done these things, and that's our area of expertise now. So don't let that intimidate you and hold you back. Um, let that be a point of strength that you grow from. You're going to learn. You're going to find out all the ways and then attack it appropriately. The second piece to that is all the small business centers, all 58 centers in North Carolina, are held in the strictest confidence. So when you come to a small business center seeking guidance, we do not convey your information to anyone, even to each other. We are held to the high standards of confidence to protect you, and our goal is to cheer you on, encourage you, and be your partner in success. Thank you, because that is also one of the things that I have to be careful of is I'm, I'm in the industry, and you know, this is, I, I got to make my living to be able to make my living. So thank you for that. That's really good information. Yeah, we have to sign a document with the state. So it's filed, you know, with the North Carolina government that what we are told is confidential, you know, and that's it. And it, it's important because if you've got a great idea and you're like, well, I don't really want to say you know, we're not going to go out. I've started businesses, and I am so happy that I'm helping other people start a business or grow a business. I don't want to start another business just because that's not the part of my life that I'm at right now. So feel confident. And, you know, we can show you the confidentiality agreement. If that's a part of the deal. So that's a great point that Joy brings up. Yeah, I appreciate that. Wonderful, wonderful, and it's so good to have two directors on board with us tonight. It shows the spirit of teamwork and uh, mutual helpfulness that we're all about, and I'm just so excited to to uh, have a chance to be a part of everybody's journey on this road and make you all part of mine. If there are no other comments, I'll be saying good night to you, and uh, God bless you. hope you have a great week, and we'll be back online tomorrow night and Thursday night with new, new topics. Uh, Mainly, we'll start talking about marketing tomorrow night. You're always welcome to join us. So uh, thank you so much. And again, those are not on my website for tomorrow night and Thursday night, but they're out there. Just look for your other small business centers. Steve, I'll probably see you Sunday. Hey, I'd love for you too. Thank you so much. Bring a towel, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for your attendance. We appreciate it. And again, you know, We've said it enough. We're here for you. Uh, I'm at a conference right now, but my email, Steve posted, my phone, 910-879-5572. Any way we can help you, we want to and look forward to it. Well said. Okay, good night, everybody. God bless you and your family and your business. Take care. Thank you all. Good night. Good night.